Hi, everybody. Look, yeah, by the medium score. So welcome, welcome to Contena Contena Meetup. And uh, today on uh, agenda is uh, introduction to Contena volumes and managing data with Docker in general. So I'm Lauri Nevala, and uh, I'm one of co one of the co-founder co of Contena, and I'm currently software engineer. I'm I'm dealing the Contena cloud development. And you can follow me on Twitter and find me in GitHub as well. <coughs> yeah, how many of you is is new to containers or do you have any any background with containers already? Yeah. Uh, Contena, Contena got new release. Uh, was it a couple of weeks ago? We released Contena 1.2, and uh, and with that release, there was a couple of improvements. There was new feature Contena Shell. It was a CLI plugin where you can uh, use CLI in a, in a shell mode. And then we, we, on the same time, we, we released new features to Contena Cloud as well. Now all the Contena platforms will send in real time data to Contena Cloud and you can see, you can see the process there as well. And uh, one big, big feature was volume support. It's, it's marked as experimental at this moment, so there might be some changes on, on API, API side, but the core technology, I think it's, it's quite stable. And uh, also we improved service deployment and agent communication, so now the flow should be more, more robust. So, in the container cloud, now we have a grid overview, and there's metric and st statistics from nodes and services. You see how, how much each node is consuming resources, and you can see stack and services, those those process there, and also see the logs and audit trail. And like I mentioned, the Contena shell, shell is an interactive console interface for Contena. You can, you can enter to Contena shell <coughs> just executing Contena shell command. And here you can execute command like you are doing with Contena CLI. So we can create, for example, some Nginx service and deploy it. Yeah, yeah. So <coughs> so here as well. Thanks. Any better now? Okay. <laughs> so 
So now I scaled the Nginx service to 10 instances and we should see the progress in a component cloud. <coughs> So now the agents are pulling engine, Nginx images and deploy, deploy the one service instance on time. Yeah, now it's, it's scaled the instance and <coughs> <coughs> we can see stats and metrics from the service. This is this is some new service that the agents have have not collected any, any stats yet, but eventually they will appear here. And uh, on an overview, the cloud is aggregating uh, statistics and metrics from from the whole grid and uh, display the overall situation and uh, you can see the top top CPU nodes and memory usage and disk usage nodes so you you will get idea what is the status of your grid for example if I open this this one node I can see that one fresh free service instance is consuming lots of memory here. Let's stop that service so it's not consuming any mem any resources anymore. And Remove that the Nginx service. So that one thing on shelf, when you run scripts and stuff, there is, or is there any need to use that? Do, do, do you want to do some no. automation or? Like Not really. The CLI is for that. You can okay. you can okay. script the CLI, but this is some other way to do the thing. Yeah, that was short introduction what we what we have improved with container 1.2. And uh, like I mentioned, the uh, big piece was uh, volume support. So <coughs> let's take a quick look how you can manage data with Docker itself. So when you run Docker container, uh, there's the volumes, data vol volumes that that are specially designated directory within one or more containers that by bypasses the union file system. So Docker is mounting one file system path in to inside your container and it, when container writes there, it will end up to host system, file system. So if we if we run one container, let's use Redis. So let's clean up. So now my Redis container is running and we can see with docker inspect command. Here is one volume that, that is pointing to data and it is mounted to this file path in, in 
in this case, it's in, in inside the doc, Docker virtual machine that is running on my Mac. But we can we can see with Docker volume list. that this Docker volume with this ID on AIM exists. But the problem is that you cannot actually update the container itself. When you want to make any changes, uh, you have to create new container with new config and you cannot reuse that volume. Uh, there are a couple of ways how you can you can reuse and purchase data. First thing is uh, data volume con if you use data volume containers, then you can mount the host right directory as a d data volume, but it's not so good option in production environment because you cannot really know. Uh, you can might have different nodes, so you don't know what what host directory do you you have in in those nodes. I think you could use something like Docker to not get the data volume across your nodes. Yeah, and uh, we are coming to that. Okay. But this is this is with plain Docker as as the what is the origin of of that block, uh, problem. Yeah, but then you can use name, named volumes and process the data to there. So data volume containers, they are, they are containers that are not running and those containers process the data to the volumes. And then you can share those uh, uh, volumes in your running containers that are non persistent. And how you can actually some of those volume containers that are more than three rows. <laughs> yeah. So how you can create this kind of data volume container is you you <coughs> you can use Docker create command. With that command you create container that is not running, but it's it's still uh, consuming some volumes for example. So <coughs> we can create data volume container Still, uh, still some legacy system here. So with Docker PS command with A or all option, we can see that we have a uh, Reddit data containers that is created and we can use that container as a data volume container. Why I use the same same Docker image for the data volume container as, as for my running container is that it, it will create the file system path uh, in place there. And we can use volumes from option to uh, attach those volumes to my running container.
yeah, now I have this ready container running. You can exec some commands, make exer that it's working. So now I'm just updating some value. Make sure that we process that to from memory to disk and remove this container. And now we can recreate this container and use volumes from the data container. And now when we are incrementing again, we will see the old value is, is, is there. So if you, if you, by default, when you remove container, Docker won't delete those volumes. So they will remain remain, but if, you, if those are not named, you can reuse, cannot reuse those. So you have to clean up, clean up those every now and then. <coughs> okay, that was the data volume containers. And, uh, uh, name it volumes is, is it's very similar to data volume containers, but instead those volumes, they are not containers, but it's, it's the file system stuff. And uh, <coughs> you can, you can uh, if you want to create name and volume, you can just can pass, pass it as we or volume option and Docker will create automatically volume with that name. So <clears throat> So now I created and he gave volume option and we can list volumes and see that Docker has created that data vo volume. By the way, sorry to interrupt, but can you please show the, the permissions for your uh, forward slash data directory that was just created by Docker? Just curious. Uh, it's a, I, 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 yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And but from, from the, the but from, from outside. But from outside, from Lowry, Lowry user, the permissions would be different. Can, can you please show? Um, actually, uh, I not I don't know how to do it because the the file system is inside the Docker uh, <laughs> uh, the Mobi VM, not on my on my Mac OS. Ah, okay. But it, of course, you can you can give, give some permissions and that kind of stuff to volume volume command or volume option, so you can define it it's read only and that kind of stuff. So <clears throat> now we can see that when I executed save command, it, it created this dump or db file. Yeah, 
Yeah, and basically you can attach that volume to any any container that you want. Yeah, and what is cool that Docker supports nowadays the model where you, you can use different drivers volumes. The default driver is a local. It will process data to file local file system. But you can you can use many different volume drivers and process the data outside of the host node, some exter external uh, storage. So here's some list of available plugins or drivers you can use. I'm not even sure are they <coughs> all all plugins listed here. That's what CI/CD is all about. <laughs> <laughs> These guys never stop. <laughs> but basically, how how you can do this is you install some some uh, driver manually or as a Docker plugin, and then you can reference those drivers in a Docker run command by defining volume driver option. So that was how, how we can do things with Docker and now I will show how Container is using those. There are basically two options. There's uh, plain old stateful services. So I think from the very first release Container has supported stateful services and from 1.2, we are now also supporting name and volumes and Docker engine volume pl plugins. So those stateful services, <clears throat> those are the easiest way if you just want to persist data to host node itself. And, and use, under the hood container uses this data volume container technique and container will, will deep redeploy those services every time to that node where it deployed the service first time. So it won't move those services from node to node. But this is very, very handy if you just want to persist the data. So with Contena, it's as easy as defining service as stateful. So now I'm deploying this stateful ready stack. No service exec ready db. And if I redeploy this service, so <coughs> when I'm giving the force, force option, container will replace the old container with the new one. So basically, no 
now you are redefining it. Yeah. But under the hood, container, container will use those volume, volumes from option to and gives that to the new new container. So if you now issue a Docker volumes ls, a Docker volumes list, what will you have? We can see. We can see. <coughs> so now I'm, I'm on the node where I have deployed those redis. Now I can see here's the Redis DB one one, and with all option I can see that here's also the yeah the data volume container for that instance, but because it's it's using those data volume container the. You cannot really, really know what is this. It's some, some of these. Yeah, yeah, you would have to inspect the, yeah. the container to see which mount point it's using in terms of data volume. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, now you can use also named volumes. And with container, you can create those volumes beforehand. You give scope and driver and name option. You can also you add some driver specific options to those volumes. And then you can just reference those volumes in a stack file. You introduce that I want to use this Redis data volume, it's an external, and reference it in a, in a service config, like like you can do with the Docker Compose. Let's see. <clears throat> Clean up these. So let's create one uh, one volume. And then we can we can define it in a, in a in a stack file. So we can just uh, tell that we want to use volume within this stack as redis data, but actually it's it's Redis instance volume in a container scope. And So when you create container volume, it, it's, it's actually just a placeholder. It's not deployed to anywhere yet, but it's, it will be deployed when, when you uh, deploy the first service that is using the volume. So now we can, uh, we can uh, see that if we, if we see the details of this volume, so actually we can see that because in a, in a stack file we, we have defined 
uh, that we want to we want three Redis instances, and the scope of this volume was uh, instance. Container created uh, one volume instance for each is service instance. And <clears throat> that means that if we if we execute some some commands with Redis, this this was executed on a, on a first instance, and if we execute in a second instance, the counter was was unique for each each instance. Yeah, actually, actually, container. First thing that it, it will it will look is that if you have uh, some volume with some specific volume driver, container will container will look or find uh, what node contains that kind of uh, driver. So, what is the sufficient node to deploy this service? And of course, container will create those named volumes. If we if we go to oh, so in this one they they were uh, not created already no so the subsequent commands would re respond faster oh oh you mean those already CLI commands yeah uh, no I don't I don't see why those are slow of course they will go through master to to host node and then response will return first on master and it will return it to CLI so there's some slow slowness of course but actually the command is, is equal okay. but like a, <coughs> like you can see now container has created these name volumes for each service instance and it will reuse those when you redeploy re the service <coughs> Yeah, you might notice that I mentioned and talk about scopes. Those scopes are is the, is the way how how different instances can can see those volumes. So when you define the volume scope as instance, then every instance will have a unique name volume. It can be also stack the stack wide. So then every instance within the same stack can use the same name and volume. But depending on, on the driver, if it's a local driver, then every, every stack instance uh, on the same host node will it, or can use the same name and volumes. But it's, it's different name and volume on other, another node. So those are not by default shared volumes but if you want to use some shared volumes then you have to pick up some volume driver that support that and then it there's also grid level scope so every every service on the same grid can use those named volumes Wrong button. Let's go back. But we can try to mimic this stack scope instance with Redis. Redis is not the best best application to demo this kind of stuff because 
it's it's more memory related thing but we can create volume with stack scope and use that volume with our stack file Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yo, so you define the driver for volumes and the scope for volumes. Right. So let's say execute some increment commands for instance number one and then restart this service and then if we execute this command on another instance it used to search state and yeah because they they, they were using the Search volume, so when it ready to reload itself, it loaded the data. So this is using local driver, so all the instances are on the same node running? Yeah, I, I have now forced them to run on the, on the same node. But if, if you are not using any affinity rules, Contana will create these named volumes to each, each node where the service instance instances are deployed. Yeah, but then they wouldn't share the data if it's using local. No. That's where the volume driver do the job. So Let's use some, some other volume driver than local. This is an example how you can, you can use a Rex, a Rex Ray volume driver with digital loads and block storage. <coughs> I have already configured and installed Rex, Rex Ray. It's very straightforward. You just execute randomly some curl command from internet. Mm -hmm. And then you configure the Rexway. You just set that the services tops DigitalOcean block storage and give DigitalOcean token, access token, and DigitalOcean region where you want to create this volume. And then I restart Docker. I don't know is it required, but. Uh, Restarting Docker every now and then is it's not so bad idea. And then, then I have created a volume named WordPress and gave Rex Ray driver option. And <coughs> there's there's a let's say bug in Rex Ray that it doesn't allow. Uh, volumes that contains dots and that kind of stuff and container will prefix those those uh, name and volumes with the dots and because they are totally totally valid uh, volume names on on docker point of view but with digital ocean rex array driver it, it will cause error on a digital ocean api 
But for example, with uh, Amazon EBS, you can use that out of the box. So that's why I'm using grid scope when there's no no any prefix in name volumes. Then we can just start using this this volume volume with with our stack file. Like like you can see in a, in a stack file, you don't have to worry about the volume drivers. It's it's just using the exist, existing volumes. So one person can create those volumes, and another person can start using those. Okay, yeah. You can you can install it with container stack install. some problem <coughs> that there was already some old, old content running and reserving that port. Let's check that. It's not there anymore. So now what container, container is doing, it, it will search for the no, node that ha contains that Rex Ray volume driver. So you cannot deploy this service to any other nodes where it's not possible to run. <coughs> and when you when you deploying the service that contains some volumes with a specific driver, Rex Ray will create this block storage under the hood for you, so you don't have to create those on on, on digital also. Okay. <coughs> I have to wait wait the timeout and reconnect to the di digital ocean droplet where I have configured. Uh, connection. Um, was it so that um, when using digital logs and block storage, uh, the block storage can only be con uh, connected to one uh, droplet? Yes. So you can use the same volume from uh, multiple No, instances. No, with this also volume. no. But you, you can detach that volume and attach that to another node. That's possible. Is but on, on the same time. Is this. Um, Restriction from a uh, digital ocean only, or does uh, Rex Ray allow using no, same volume from multiple? No, that that's digital ocean limitation. But you can use a different different driver, for example, S3 FS to to process data to Amazon S3, and then you can say that that to between different nodes. But yeah, in this node, you can see that there's named volume is WordPress and it's using Rex Ray driver. And let's create some WordPress block.
Oh, come on. I, you, you didn't hmm? type that line of password. No. I'm guessing you did Lowry Lowry by the way you typed it. Yeah. You, didn't, you didn't put an egg character when you did it. Yeah, it's five or six. Four, yeah. four or five or something. How, no. how could I? You did like five characters for your password, not eight. You're typing eight there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but I'm, I, I forget one, forget one letter from I don't know where. Which one? Yeah, one of the balls. Okay, this. How to recover? How to recover? One of the best passwords is actually just make it small. There's no need to recall the password. What you just read it play it? Just in confirm, of course. Problem solved. Yeah. And of course, it's your, your stateful data is somewhere else, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> so you can reattach it. <laughs> oh, oh come on, this is the same in that case. <laughs> <laughs> True. Hey, no worries. It happens to everyone. It's the more things. What is called cloud saying? Yeah, it's all seems to be good. Okay. Now I give a sort of that you cannot guess. So is it the one that will be proposed? <laughs> <laughs> Great. Okay, let's let's customize our brand new block. Give some give some related image. Okay, looks good. But what, what we can do is we can actually remove this WordPress service. So that's now you're just removing the, the front end containers here. Yeah, so we sit there now. Yeah, it's not responding anymore. <coughs> and just upgrade our, our stack. It will. It will <coughs> bring it back. Or oh, at least I'm hoping. <laughs> and this automatically attaches the volume again based on your YAML file. Again. Yes. Yeah. So it, it will use the same name volume where the image was persisted. Yeah, I in mean, this it, case, it, yes. It's already good. Yeah. Is, 
does DigitalOcean have a shared volume kind of option? Not, not yet, no. but what you can do with DigitalOcean, you can, you can actually use the S3FS volume driver Inside. and use S3. So, and then output to that. There, okay, so there might be the some latency, but. Right. but so, you have a drop yeah. it here, but then the S3 yeah. is where you have the actual persistent data, yeah. Yeah, which probably some people do anyway. They have their containers and multiple platforms, but then the, the static data could be just in one, one location. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, if that S S3 driver works with Minio as well, probably. Yeah, I think it's, it's it API compatible. Compa so would it be possible to move the uh, service from another node because you can't uh, move the block storage from a uh, droplet to another? Mm -hmm. Or that can, can the Rex Ray or something do that? Or does it keep the block based, storage? Based on documentation, not yet. Okay. I don't know, are there any plans for that? But, but Oh, you were saying actually what detach the volume yeah, from one yeah. one instance and move it to another yeah. instance and then it would or move it to the one where the, the container got yeah. deployed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So but so yeah. But it probably potentially could work, but that's more of a, yeah. a manual and not a map, but it could mm -hmm. be in your automated process you'd have to do that, yeah. Yeah, but the uh Rex Ray or something was already creating those block storages to ah, you were one also and so it I guess it could also detach and attach them to another profile. Yeah, and like we we can see now that it's it's responding with the same back background image. So apparently, volume driver did its its job. But this was a, of course this was just an example of using volume drivers. This is not the best example using shared volumes, but with with choosing the correct volume driver, it, it's totally possible. Yeah, I think that's, that's all I have, have to say. Do you have any, any further questions? So the example was using digital awesome, but what, are, what if I want to keep everything running on upcloud? Mm, you you can uh, check what volume drivers are suitable to run with upcloud and uh, how you can process the data yeah. there. Yeah, I don't think there's anything uh, existing because upcloud doesn't provide separate volumes or not. It, it has some kind of volumes, but not. Yeah. Not maybe maybe not you the can. Same kind as yeah. Maybe you can you can build some cluster thing by your so by I yourself and use. Yeah. So I, I guess I have to build like SEP cluster or rook or something and yeah. connect Rex Ray to use that or some some other driver. Yeah. That sounds quite a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, but things things no, are so evolving. <laughs> things are evolving. So I might have missed a little piece there, but can you actually have, let's say, containers running in this region and all the volumes in some other region? Um, of course, there will be more latency and stuff, but... Um, yeah. Technically, yes, but for example, digital ocean doesn't support that. You have to use the... But I mean, I mean the same way that Contena has options that running securely between different regions. Yeah. So if it's within the, the same VPN network, then it should work. Yeah, if, if, if the volume driver is supporting that. Okay, okay. Maybe I missed something as well. But I just want to make sure that at this point, this container release, if I, if I attach volume to container, can I do it so that we can I do it so that when the container is restarted in some other node somewhere, the the volume, be it local volume or be it not uh, point from whatever, goes to the node. No, 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 that's I that's not ultimate. Okay. Maybe maybe in some future release, but n not this release yet. Um, and maybe also I missed something, 
but this was of the container, can I scale up the number of uh, instances of containers using the shared uh, volume container in different hosts in my data center? <coughs> yeah, if, if, if you are using some volume driver that supports shared state, then yes. Like the this the Rex Ray with the digital ocean is, is, is not supporting that. Uh -huh. But for example, if you are running running for example in Amazon and use S3 yeah. to save the data, then it's it doesn't matter where the container is running, it, it will use the yeah. data from S3. Thanks. Yeah. But if you haven't already done, please sign up to Contena. You can use the Contena Cloud and install CLI, install Contena platforms and enjoy, enjoy the Contena. And, and of course, if you have any troubles, we have very active Slack, uh, Slack channel, please join there or post to our forum or send an email if you, if you face any problems. Great, thanks. Pizza cake. Oh yeah. Pizza cake. Well, let me know.